morning and welcome to Revit starter series, our second video in the uh, in the series. Um, so we're going to be looking at my first Revit model. So if you joined in for the first video, uh, we had a look at setting up your, your first Revit project. Uh, we had a look at the, the basics of the user interface. We had a look at the levels and grids and, and setting up views. Uh, so we're going to kind of follow on from that in the next stage. Uh, we're going to have a look at putting a, a basic model uh, together this morning. Okay. So before we get going, uh, for those of you who are joining us for the first time today, I'm Mark Calloway. I'm one of the application engineers here at Man and Machine. Um, I'm, on, I'm an Autodesk certified uh, trainer. I've been working uh, with Autodesk software for, for just shy of 10 years now. Uh, and I've been with uh, Man and Machine for, for just short of five years. So as mentioned, what we're gonna what we're gonna do today is we're gonna have a look at the the basic modeling tools uh, within Revit. Uh, Revit's a um, a three D application, so we'll be working in two D, but we'll also be building up a a three D model, and I'll I'll compare some of the the features um, on that front there. So we only have about 20, 30 minutes in which to try and put something um, together. Um, so I'll be touching on a, a number of tools. I won't go too in depth on them and. Um, give a, a large explanation uh, of some of the specific features. Um, but a lot of the tools that we'll be using today, we've, uh, we've got videos about, uh, tool-specific videos, we've got blogs. Uh, so if you get a chance after the webinar today, if you want to have a look at the Man Machine website, uh, well, go onto our YouTube channel, and uh, there's some uh, product-specific um, videos and articles on there, which will give you a lot more detail uh, than what we'll go through today. Okay, so I'm going to jump straight into Revit, and we're going to kind of play this one um, from the beginning. Um, so I've not set anything up in advance for today. We're going to go with one of the standard um, Revit templates, which you'll have access to if you download and install a, um, a copy of, of Revit. Um, and using the tools that we've, we've got at hand, um, we'll see how good of a model uh, we can put together. Okay. So I'm going to start a new model. So on the left hand side, I'm going to click the new button here and I'm going to choose an architectural template. Okay. So it's just one of the standard templates that comes with Revit. There's going to be certain wall types set up, uh, certain families loaded in, such as doors and windows. We're going to tweak some of the existing content within this template to suit us. Um, and again, depending on how quickly we get through this, um, I'll go into more and more detail. Um, as we go on. So we'll get something very basic put together and then we'll start improving um, the specifics of the, of the model. Starting a new project. Okay, so we straight away open up in a 2D plan. As mentioned, Revit is a 3D application and soon we get some um, content in here, some uh, elements. Um, I'll fire up a 3D view and we can see what we're, we're producing. So we're working in 2D, but we are building a 3D model. So straight off the bat, I'm going to draw some walls in this view. We're on level zero at the moment, which is essentially our ground floor we're at zero, zero uh, elevation. On the architecture tab, I'm just going to simply start the wall command. This template comes with a number of wall types preloaded. I'm going to customize this, but before I customize it, I'm just going to go with whatever's selected and I'm going to stick some walls into this model. Left click in the start point, I can just get the rough shape of the project um, of the building that I want there. Okay. So I've not thought about dimensions, I've just got the, the shape in there, but selecting any of these walls, I can then start to tweak um, the specifics a little more. So maybe from the back of the building to the front of the building, I want a distance of 10,000 millimeters. So I can tweak that. Maybe for the width of the building, we'll go for about 20,000. I can just manually drag that wall out on that side. And then to tidy it up, I'm just gonna use the wall on the other side and make that 20,000 millimeters. So we've kind of got um, the correct shape to this, this building. Again, we're only looking at level zero. We're not thinking about the elevation just yet. We can think about that in a moment. As mentioned, it was just a generic wall from the template that we've used. It's not the wall that we want. 
So we're going to customize that now. Select in any one of these walls that I've just drawn. In the properties window, I'm going to edit the type. And in the type settings, we're going to modify the structure. Again, I won't go into too much detail on this. If you go onto the uh, Man Machine blog or YouTube videos, uh, we do have um, a detailed um, through um, on the settings here. So for this one, I'm going to keep it very simple. I want a 300 mil exterior wall. Okay. Um, and I've just skipped a step there. So I'm just going to hit cancel. And we're not going to modify this one. We're going to duplicate it um, and create a new wall type. So I'm just going to hit the duplicate button there. I'm just going to call it 300 millimeter exterior wall. Okay, and then I'm going to edit the structure. So we're working on a new wall type now. It's identical to the one that we've just duplicated. And we're going to modify the structure. I'm just going to simply have three layers to this wall. There's four there at the moment, so I'm going to hit the delete button and just get rid of one of these layers. Okay, I'm just going to tweak some of the settings here. So at the top, the exterior and at the bottom, the interior. So we're just going to have a finish. Uh, maybe uh, we'll have some sort of render on the front of this building. Uh, let's have a look at what we have. There's a quick search there. Do we have anything that comes under render? We have a beige render there. Okay, so we'll go with that for the exterior wall face of our building. Um, concrete masonry, that'll do for now. Again, we're just creating a generic 300 mil wall to start off with. And later on in the project, when we know the buildup of the wall, uh, we can replace these out just as easily as we're replacing the walls that we've We've just drawn. It's going to be 300 mils thick is the wall. Uh, so maybe I'll do the structures 275 uh, and then we'll have 12.5 uh, both for the interior and exterior renders there. And that's all I'm going to simply do there. Let's click the OK button. OK again. And we have a new wall type um, that we can use as a, a placeholder um, on this project. This wall that was selected is automatically updated to this new wall type. I'm going to select one of the other walls, right click on it. Select all walls of the same type in this view. And in the properties window, in the type selector, I can update them with the wall type that we've just created. So now that we've got some basic walls in this project, we might want to start thinking three dimensionally and looking at the elevation, okay? Now in this project, we only have two levels. We have a level zero and we have a level one. If I just jump into an elevation view, maybe the south elevation view, we can kind of um, see um, the levels that we, we have within this project. Again, I covered levels in the previous uh, webinar, so I won't go into too much detail on those. It's gonna be a multi-story building that we create. Maybe we'll have a, a ground floor, plus three additional floors, um, and we'll have a roof level. So very quickly, I'm gonna start the level command. And again, I'm not too bothered where I'm placing these at the moment. I'm just getting the correct number of levels in there. Okay, so we've got a ground floor, first, second, third. We'll have a roof and then maybe a parapet on there. Level four is gonna be the roof. So just to make things a little clearer for us, I'm gonna, rename that level to roof. Level five is going to be our parapet. Okay. And at the same time, we're updating the names of the levels in the project browser. Next, we're going to think about the actual elevations of these levels. So I'm going to go for 4,000 mils for each level. Oops. So I'm just going to, well, be 8,000. Update these elevations very quickly because we don't want to spend too much time on levels. That'll be 12,000. That'll be 16,000. And then the parapet, uh, maybe we'll do that at 16,500. Okay. So if I just open up a 3D view, and I'm just going to open up the default 3D view, we can see the levels we've created. And we can see the walls that we've drawn in the floor plan there. If I select one of these walls and we look at the properties in the properties window, we can see the base of the walls on level zero. And we can see for the top of the wall, 
it's not connected to any levels. It just has a manual um, height of 8,000 millimeters. I'm going to want all four of these walls. So I'm going to select all four of them at the same time to go all the way up to the parapet level. So for the top constraint, I'm going to set that as the parapet level. And you can see that the walls have now changed that parapet level. Being tied to a level, should the elevation of a level change at any point in the project, the walls will automatically update there. Okay. As well as changing the height, maybe I want to add a depth to the walls as well. Okay. So I'm just going to put a negative uh, value for the base offset, maybe five at minus 500, and the walls will extend down um, below uh, level zero. Maybe I wanted to put a foundation on the base of these walls. I'm not going to be too specific about the shape of the foundations. If I just go to the structures tab, foundation group, and hit the wall foundation tool, I can just go around left clicking on these exterior walls, and Revit's going to place um, a foundation on the base of those there. Okay. So we've kind of got the exterior walls of the project how we want them for now. Thinking about the design we're going to go for, maybe we'll have some um, nice curtain walling on the front of the building, going full height. Okay. We'll have a couple of traditional windows and maybe a door. Okay. So I'm going to jump back into the level zero view for now. Okay, so we're building this 3D model, but again, I'm working in 2D. I can equally work in 3D, and we'll do a little bit of that in a moment. So for the curtain wall, again, architecture tab, wall tool. And from the wall types, if I scroll all the way down, we can see there's some curtain wall in here. Okay, I'm just going to select this empty one. And we're going to customize it ever so slightly. So I'm going to go into a type settings and I'm not going to duplicate it. I'm just going to overwrite this version. So we can see we can control the vertical and the horizontal grid structure um, of this curtain wall. In. So I'm going to set it so that we have a fixed distance for the vertical grid, maybe of 1,500. For the horizontal grid, I might go for 2,000. OK. I want this curtain wall to sit inside the walls we've already drawn. So I don't want to have to go to the effort of creating an opening and then placing this inside. If I take this automatically in bed, I can draw it straight over our exterior walls and Revit will automatically create an opening in which to place that. Okay. I'm going to assign a panel to it. We'll just use glazed panels. So I'm going to have a look at what we have in here and somewhere we should have a glazed panel. And with that design, again, I'm just going to place this in the wall. We can tweak the dimensions at a later stage. Click start point, click an end point, And that's going to embed the curtain wall inside the existing wall. So you can see that it's cut out the existing exterior wall. Again, if I jump in a 3D view, we can see the curtain wall that's been placed. If I select the curtain wall. Again, we're going to have this go all the way up to the roof level this time. Okay, so I'm going to select up to roof and Revit's going to extend the heights of that wall there. I'm going to place some windows, some traditional windows this time. So again, on level zero, architecture tab, window tool. This template comes with a few preloaded in. I'm just going to use these. We can always change uh, the settings later and make our own custom windows for this project. But for now, we'll just use these as a, a bit of a placeholder. Moving the mouse over the wall, I can choose which way the window faced, depending on which side of the wall I'm going to move the mouse over. I've got these temporary dimensions, so I can eyeball uh, where these are going to be placed. So maybe I want um, a thousand mils worth of wall and then the window. And then maybe again, I'll have a spacing um, of a thousand mil between those two windows there. At any point, I can select those windows and I can update these values. Okay. We'll place a door as well. So architecture tab, door tool. We've got a double exterior door here. So I'm just going to use that for now. Again, we can replace these at any point. I'm going to have it swing into the building. Maybe I'll leave another thousand mils between the second window and the door. Simply eyeballing it, I can place that there. 
Jumping back into the 3D view, we can now see the door and windows we've created. Maybe these two windows replicate on each story of this building. I could go to each level and a thousand mils from that wall, place another pair of windows. Alternatively, I can select these windows that I've just placed. And using the copy and paste tool, we can paste to specific levels within Revit and it will replicate the layout vertically through your project. I'm going to align to selected levels. I can pick multiple levels. So I want these on levels one, two, and three. Click OK. And Revit's going to replicate that vertically through the building. OK, so we've got something that's starting to look a bit like a building. OK, and don't judge me on uh, my architecture skills there. OK, so we've looked at walls, we've looked at doors, we've placed curtain wallings, we've got some windows. We don't have any floors in this building yet. OK, so we'll put a slab on the ground floor and then maybe on um, the first, second and third, uh, we'll also have a floor, but we'll have to set it back where the curtain wall is. And, and if we get time, maybe we'll put a, a railing there um, and we can have a, a bit of an opening that goes full height uh, through the building. Again, at level zero, architecture tab, floor tool. Just like with the walls, we can make our own custom types. I'm just going to select a very simple floor type. I'm going to duplicate it. I'm just going to call it basic floor for now. And we can replace this later on when we know what the buildup of this floor is going to be. For the structure, let's get rid of that metal deck there. Maybe we'll have 300 mil thick concrete cast in place. Now that we've got this new floor type, we just need to draw the boundary of the floor. We get a number of draw tools on the ribbon bar here. So you can draw lines, rectangles, arc circles, all the usual stuff. But we've also got this pick walls button here. And what that means is I can click on a wall and Revit will draw in the boundary line for me. And I can go around and click on all four exterior walls. And we've now got the boundary of this floor slab. Clicking the green finish tick button to confirm. Revit's going to ask us if we want to attach the floor slab to other elements such as walls where there may be join conditions. I'm going to click yes in this instance. And Revit's going to generate this floor slab um, on level zero for us. I could replicate that through the project as well if I wanted to, just like the windows. However, on the first floor, we're going to have a slightly different shape to the floor slab. So in the project browser, I'm going to go to level one. I'm going to go to the floor tool. And to save time, I'm just going to use the same floor type for now. It wouldn't be cast in place um, concrete that you might use. It might be something else um, compared to the ground floor. But for this example, I'll just go with the same. I'm going to use the pick wall tools again, but this time only on three of the walls. And then at the front, I'm just going to manually draw in the boundary where the curtain wall is. So maybe we'll have a bit of a, a balcony, just ever so slight, where the curtain wall is. Now, this time when I drew the boundary lines using the pick walls tool, let's put them on the exterior of the wall. Selecting one of these, I can just click this little flip arrow and it's just going to move them all inside the walls. Then using the trim corner tool, I can just tidy up the line work that I drew with the line work with the pick walls tool. Clicking the green finish tick button, Revit's going to generate that floor slab. This we will replicate through the building. So again, just jumping into a 3D view just so we can visualize that. I've got the floor selected. I'm going to use the copy tool. Line to selected levels. We're already on level one, so it's level two and level three that I want this on. Clicking OK, we've now replicated that floor through this project. OK. I'm going to get a bit wet inside, so we need a roof. OK. So I'm going to jump into the roof floor plan. Again, we're doing a lot of this work in 2D. 
and we're building this 3D model up at the same time. Architecture tab, roof tool. There's a few roof tools here. I'm just going to create it by footprint. So it's going to be similar in method to what we've just done with the floor. Looking at the floor types in here, maybe I'll go with this felt one for this example. Okay. Again, I can use the pick wall tool and draw the boundary of this roof. By default, the roof is going to slope to each of these faces. And we can kind of see that it's got a default value of 30 degrees. I could do a flat roof on here, but I want an ever so slight slope on it, just so that the water can run off um, towards the edges where it can drain. So we're going to put a 5% slope on this. If I just come out of that pick wall tool and select the boundary lines that we've drawn, in the properties window, I'm going to set the slope to 5%. Confirming that, Revit is going to generate the roof. If we have a look at that in a 3D view, we now have a very simple uh, roof um, on the building there. If you wanted a flat roof, and I'll just do this one in the 3D view, you can work equally as well in 3D in Revit as you can uh, in 2D. I can just turn off this defines roof slope and it'll just stop the roof from sloping towards any of those faces. Okay. So we've now got something that's starting to look like a building. Okay, it could be an office building, it could be student apartments, um, it, could, it could be for a variety of purposes, but we're just kind of making this one up uh, as we go today. Okay, so we're kind of missing some content inside. So maybe some internal partition walls and we can start um, specifying rooms um, and populating it with uh, um, some furniture. Okay, again, all dependent on how much we can squeeze into today's session. So we'll just concentrate on level zero for now. So again, we'll create some internal partition walls. So I'm going to start the wall command again. And I'm just going to use one of the partition walls that comes with this template. Okay, just to save time, we won't make um, a generic one. Maybe we'll start at the midpoint of this wall here. So I'm going to grab this midpoint snap. I'm going to draw a partition wall. It's going to go most of the way across the project there. Okay. Maybe we'll have a stairwell on the left hand side. So I'm just going to mark out an area that can be the stairwell. Maybe we'll have a bit of a receptions desk in there. Okay. And maybe there's a space behind uh, where the reception is. If we have a look in our 3D view again, it's a bit difficult for us to see what we're doing on level zero, but very easily I can just right click on the view cube here and I'm going to orientate the view to our level zero. And what that's going to do is it's going to stick on this crop box and we can now view what we're seeing on level zero quite clearly. Okay, I'm just going to hide the box. So I'm just going to get rid of that there. And we're going to start customizing the walls a little bit here. So I mentioned this might be reception. So we might have a low lying wall with some sort of countertop on top. Quite easy to do. Again, jumping back into our level zero floor plan, I'm going to split this wall. Okay, so on the modify tab, modify tools, I'm going to find split element. And I'm going to split that wall there. And what I've got now is three segments where we had one solid segment. This wall, instead of going from the ground floor up to the floor slab above, maybe we're going to set a height. Okay, so maybe we'll do this. Uh, we'll keep it nice round numbers. We'll go for a height of about a meter. So I'm going to make that unconnected again. Manually put in a height of a thousand millimeters. If we jump in our 3D view, you can see that we've customized that there. Maybe we'll put some sort of countertop on there. And for that, we'll just model in place. OK, you could design an element to sit there, but for speed and um, ease, we're going to model in place. And maybe I'll do this one in the 3D view just to give you an, a 3D example. On the architecture tab, component, 
model in place. Okay. I'm just going to leave this as uh, generic for its category that this component is going to belong to. And I'm just going to call it counter just to give it a generic name. Could be an extrusion, it could be a sweep that we used. I might use the sweep tool for this example. Then I'm going to pick a path. And I'm just going to simply click on one of the edges to this counter here. With the path for this sweep set, we can draw the profile. So I'm going to edit the profile. And we now just need to draw the shape of this counter. Okay. So it's just going to be a simple rectangular counter. Maybe there'll be a bit of an overhang at the back and a little bit of one at the front. We'll do it about 50 mils thick. And I'm just going to close the loop there. Confirming that, we now have a path and a profile. And Revit's going to sweep that along this wall here. OK, we've now got a bit of a, a countertop there. We can set the materials for this if we need to. We do have the options to set materials. Maybe we'll give it a nice wood finish. OK, so I'm just going to do a very quick search for something that might be wood. Uh, let's have a look at what we have. Ah, a nice plain wood there. We'll just go with that. And we can apply that material um, to this uh, countertop here. Happy with the design? Click the green finish tick button to finish this model in place and return back to the project. OK. So, we're a little short on time now, so I'll just cover a few of the other things very briefly. OK, so maybe this stairwell will place a staircase in there. I'm going to jump to level zero. Architecture. Stair tool. I'm just going to go for a cast in place staircase, just something simple. OK, it's so going to go from level zero to level one. And we can see that based on the settings for this type, um, it needs 24 risers or thereabouts. I'm going to specify the run left, so we're going to draw the left hand side of the path and the staircase will sit to the right. I'm just going to pick a start point, maybe here, and you can see as I move my mouse, we're kind of drawing this staircase and you can kind of get a preview of the, the length it needs to run um, for us to create this staircase. If I just stop short of the full run, I can create a landing. Okay, and then I'm going to continue that around and generate a staircase there. Not perfect for this example. I've done a bit of a, a poor job there, um, but I'll go with it uh, for the couple of minutes that we've got. I'm just going to confirm that. Okay, and it doesn't like something with the railings there. Probably again that corner, but we'll ignore that for now. And if I jump into the 3D view, you can see we've created uh, a very simple staircase there. We can make that multi-story if we need to. Okay. Um, but for this example, we'll just concentrate on level zero. I might want to populate this with some furniture. Maybe we'll put some tables and chairs in there. If I go back to the component tool and go to place a component, we don't really have much furniture in here. We do have a desk, which might be suitable for the office, for example. But I'm going to load in a family from the generic um, library that's installed with Revit. And we'll place some better furniture in here. So I'm going to go to the Insert tab. I'm going to go to the Load Family. Okay, and I'm just going to change the folder I'm working in. Okay. I'm going to come out of the Revit 22 and I'm going to go into the Revit 2021 folder. Libraries, English, Furniture. Got some tables here. See if we can find something that looks reasonably okay. Maybe a coffee table. Load that in. Start the component command again. Choose the type of table you want to place. Maybe we'll go for something a little bigger. Okay. So maybe I'll place a couple of those in here. Again. You can work in 2D, you can work in 3D. I'm just going to place a few in the 3D view just simply by left clicking. And if I go back to the level zero, I can tidy these up using the align command. Oops. 
like so. Right, okay. With a bit more time, I could put some indoor plants, some chairs around these tables, uh, so on and so forth. Okay. So we've kind of generated this basic floor plan. Maybe I want to specify the functions of some of these areas. On the architecture tab, I'm going to go to the room tool. And we know this is the reception desk, so I'm just going to click in this area here. And that's going to be our, our reception. I'm just going to update the name. And maybe we'll give it a room number. So maybe this is room 101, reception area. We can control what information displays. So if you don't want the meter squares or square foot, you can turn those off if you need to. Now that we've added this first room, if I place a second one, and maybe we've got an archive room at the back here, the numbering will follow on. So instead of placing all the rooms and then updating the room numbers, if I place the first one and then set what number it is, all the other rooms will follow. You just place them in the order that you want them to be numbered. And again, I can then update the information here as to the name of this, this particular room. Okay. So very quickly in the 20 or so minutes um, that we've got, we've managed to put together um, a very basic um, structure here. Okay. So with a little bit more time, we could work through the level of detail on these. We could specify the exact types of walls that we want to use. Uh, we could customize the doors, uh, the windows, um, and the layouts of the paneling on the glazing. Okay. So nice little video there just to show you the capabilities of Revit. We've been working in 2D. We've been building this 3D model up. And you can work equally as well in 3D once you get used to that side of things. So in the next webinar, uh, which is in a couple of weeks' times, um, if you want to sign up to that, we'll have a look at Revit in a collaborative way. So at the moment, we've just kind of been working on this as, as one user. But you can have it set up in a way that multiple people can access the project at the same time. Uh, you can designate different work sets so people can work on different parts of the building at the same time um, and that sort of stuff. So we'll have a look at that um, on our third session. Okay, and again, if you want to look at Revit in more detail, check out the YouTube channel, Manor Machine YouTube channel. Uh, we look at a lot of the tools, such as um, editing wall types um, in a lot more detail. Um, and you can also go onto the Manor Machine website um, onto our blog there. We've got a number of uh, technical, article, technical articles, tips and tricks, and all that sort of stuff. Okay, so thank you for watching, and I'll see you on our third broadcast. Thank you. Thank you.